Welcome everyone to our Ada J Author new user webinar. This again is Jessica Frank, Ada J Author's project manager. Today we are going to talk about um, our summer research project. We had an ATJ Tech Fellow, an Access to Justice Tech Fellow, Alexandra Jones um, from Duquesne. She's a 3L now. She spent the summer auditing our automated forms across the United States and doing um, a deep dive into where forms have been automated, what are the most popular automated forms, sort of seeing what it would be like as a self-represented litigant, looking at legal aid websites and court websites and Law Health Interactive to try and find um, these top automated forms. So Lexi can't be with us today. She is, as I mentioned, a 3L, so she had class um, during our, our scheduled meeting today. Um, so we have a video, a short video of her explaining her process and sort of what her results were. And then also with me, I have John Mayer, our executive director of Cali, who's going to talk about how we can take Alexandra's work and turn it into um, knocking out all of the low-hanging fruit um, to get 100% access to justice or as close as possible that we can get. Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining us. My name is Alexandra Jones, and I'm a law clerk here at Cali. Today, I will be showing you a quick presentation outlining one of our major projects from the summer. So our task here was to gather information about available court forms and figure out if these forms are being automated for users or if they're made available in another way. We decided to stick to just 52 jurisdictions, so we did every state plus Washington, D.C. and Guam. The main focus of this task was to see how frequently A to J author was being used. And then if there was not an A to J author interview available, then we would look elsewhere. So the top 25 forms that we counted can be seen here. Oh, I'm not going to make you guys read every single one or go through every single one. But the main focus here is that a lot of them are very simple, civil and family law based things like child support, divorces, name changes, things that everyday people need to go to a courthouse or might need an attorney to assist them, but they might not be able to easily access those things, especially during a time of a global pandemic. Of all the forms that we have, we found that 18% of the 25 most popular ones were automated either with or without A to J author. And I would like to note that these numbers do not include forms that were automated with hot docs. It was either a traditional A to J interview or some other type of automated system. And then of those forms that we found, 10% were made by A to J authors and again, just note that those do not include any um, interviews that you might have that would be made with hot docs. So here we have a graph that shows all of the forms that we had and how they're broken up. But I really want to focus on the orange, yellow, and purple bars you see in the middle. Those are forms that are either non-fillable PDFs, fillable PDFs, and Word docs. And you might be wondering, you know, why is that important? I thought we were here to talk about A to J, but don't worry, we'll get to that shortly. So here is just a quick overview of the states that are using A to J author the most. And we found that Michigan and Illinois had about half or over half of their forms. For Michigan, the forms that they did not have available um, in an A to J guided interview, we were still able to find those forms elsewhere, whether that be on their legal aid site or the court website. And in Illinois, the forms that we could not find with A to J author, it seemed like those forms were also missing from other common points that pro se litigants might look to. So again, that legal aid or that court website. Arkansas, Hawaii, Kansas, Kentucky, and New York are the ones that are coming up in the rear with the number of forms that they have automated, and then the remaining states had four less each. So of the forms that are automated with A to J author, the top three or I guess five <laughs> that were automated the most were divorce and whether that is with or without minor children, name changes for both adults and minors, and then fee waivers. A lot of states, even if they only had a couple of A to J interviews, tended to have these things because for the most part, they are pretty simple, especially if a divorce, you know, is uncontested, you can go through pretty quickly and easily with an interview. 
we only found two forms that had no A to J guided interviews. The first was post-conviction relief, and then the second was SNAP or food assistance applications. However, for SNAP, that typically is handled through the state, so we weren't necessarily too surprised about that. And here, I'm just going over those top three to five forms that I mentioned previously. And again, I want to put that focus on that yellow, orange, and purple bars that show the PDFs and the Word docs. As you see, A to J is the highest sole form for divorces, but there's still a lot of room for growth within those PDFs and those Word docs. Here for the name change, most name change forms were actually fillable PDFs, then non-fillable PDFs, and then A to J. So again, just keep in mind those three bars. And then for fee waiver, the same kind of pattern followed from the name changes where fillable PDFs were number one. So after culminating all of this information, what we really needed to look at is whether or not states are automating in the way that we think they are. So yes and no. For the yes, SNAP applications were the only forms that every jurisdiction had available. And again, that's because that's usually handled through the state or the county, not something that doesn't necessarily need to go through a court or a legal aid system. Child support was next, and only one state did not have any type of form available, whether that be through Ball Health Interactive, through their legal aid, or through that state court website. And then order for Orders of protection were next, and they were available in all but two jurisdictions. However, on the flip side, 35% of the total forms that we were looking for were simply unavailable. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't exist somewhere, but it wasn't an easy task for us to find those where we know pro se litigants tend to go looking. You know, they'll type in Google, Order of Protection, Ohio. And, you know, the court website will come up, maybe a legal aid website, and they don't really know to do a lot of further digging like we might know. And then to follow that, 16% of the total forms were not fillable PDFs. And while it's great to have that form available in some format, as we're seeing through this pandemic, people might not necessarily have access to the internet in their homes. They might not have access to a printer and they might be reliant on going to a library or going to their school. So if the only way they can fill this form out is by having access to the internet and then having access to a printer to fill it out by hand, that might not necessarily be the most helpful thing. So what does this all mean? As I mentioned a couple of times, there's there's a major global pandemic going on right now. It shut down our court systems and it left citizens leaning on technology to have access to legal help. And because of that, some states are showing a desire to begin automating their forms to make that a little bit easier. And I know that this may seem like a daunting task, but it really can be simple. So as I mentioned a couple times before, focusing on those forms that are available as PDFs and words, we have sample exercises on the AJ author website that show you how to take a non-fillable PDF and turn it into an A to J form. And the same thing with a Word doc. You can easily save a Word doc as a non-fillable PDF and then go through that same process. So if you just take a look at our website here, you'll see we have guided interviews that show you how to make a simple text template and turn that into an automated form. We have ones that show you how to make PDF templates and turn that into a form. We even have ones that have multiple forms that would be in one guided interview. So for example, name changes often have a lot of different forms that come with them. It's not necessarily just one petition with a motion in an order. There are some extra steps that need to be taken. You can still get that all automated from a simple non-fillable PDF. So in the end, the goal obviously is for all of us to work together and make access to justice much more accessible for people. We appreciate you coming here and showing that you are trying to make access to justice accessible, and we hope that you have a great day. Hey, everybody. My name is John Mayer. I'm Cali's executive director. Uh, you know, our work with Alexandra was, well, well I, I was going to provide some more uh, altitude on I mean, Alexandra's work was 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 very uh, detailed and, and close to the ground. 
but I wanted to give you some altitude on on why we did it and, and what what some of the potential ramifications are for for our planning. Um, none of this is like a promise or a, or a, I feel like I'm on one of those SEC calls. You know, you should you shouldn't uh, make any investment decisions based on what I'm going to say. This is more um, uh, tally thinking out loud. Um, because uh, because I don't know whether we can succeed in uh, in, in our aspirations, but uh, but I want to talk about it um, and let people know, you know, especially on this uh, among this group, the the A to J users, um, and and if there's feedback to be gotten, fantastic. And if there's, uh, you know, I want you guys to know that we're we're working very hard on on lots of interesting things uh, in and around the whole A to J author uh, e ecosystem. So I call this talk low, low hanging fruit. Um, and you'll you'll see why in a second. Um, I always love these days. I, I love to talk. I love to start my, my slides uh, talking about the pandemic with this quote um, that that has really resonated with me. Um, I'm going to read this because it's it's worth reading. Uh, historically, pandemics have forced humans to break with the past and imagine their world anew. This one is no different. It's a portal, a gateway between one world and the next. We could choose to walk through it, dragging the carcasses of our prejudice and hatred, our avarice, our data banks and dead ideas, our dead rivers and smoky skies behind us. Or we can walk through lightly with little luggage, ready to imagine another world and ready to fight for it. I, I love that. I, and I honestly believe that this pandemic is, a, is, a, is at, least, at least an opportunity and at most uh, will we'll definitely change uh, a lot or it has the potential to change a lot about this world um, generally and specifically in in this space the access to justice space let me see if i can lay out some of those ideas so i call my talk talk low-hanging fruit because i i tend to i tend to separate the the world of uh online uh, automated court forms into uh the the complicated and difficult and maybe you should get a lawyer you know, sort of level stuff, um, and 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 the you know the, the easy stuff, the low hanging fruit, short forms, um, common forms, high volume forms, things that with a little bit of guidance, a little bit of navigation ex uh, experience, with maybe even a, a decent uh, path or flowchart through your average, and, and that's a broad average, your average self represented litigant will succeed in correctly filling out the form and in getting some sort of result from the justice system. So the low hanging fruit is where we originally intended A to J to sit 15 over 16 years ago. Um, you know, we, we, we didn't want to claim that we could like replace lawyers or, or replace the justice system. We just said that, look, an awful lot of law is pretty straightforward, uh, fair, somewhat well settled. It, it's, it's accurately communicating your issue in the language that the court and the system understands and the courts use forms as a language it's how they talk to themselves it's how they talk to their computers it's how they talk to each other you know they say you know fact 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 in these box 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 it's it's about the meta information so if you look at sort of our uh, guided interview runs over the years um, you know, lots of slow, no, lots of steady usage of our materials. And I threw in those little um, hash marks there to show, you know, when we cross the million, you know, yet another million things. So, so six, five, six million runs of A to J author, which has given us a wealth of feedback and experience about things that work and things that don't work so well. Um, you know, and, and, and this is amazing. I mean, this is a this is a huge amount of people. This is five, six million people who otherwise might not have. We, we don't know their stories necessarily, you know, other than when we dip in with interviews or with observations or other things. Uh, you know, five or six million people who may not have been able to get uh, assistance because um, either uh, a lawyer wasn't available or uh, legal aid was, was too busy. Or, or they live too far, they couldn't get a day off of work, or whatever the story is that automated forms serve, um, you know, might might have been helped. Um, and this, for a piece of software, you know, conceived of over, like I said, back in 2000, 2001, was the first conception of it. 
you know, and has been plugging away at this important space for, for a long time. So five or six years ago, we did a, we did a really quick little project with Alex Rabinall at Chicago Kent, um, in which we, we said, well, what are the most common or most popular, what's the top 10 forms that, that every state should have and which of those have been uh, automated using ADG Author? Um, and filled out this graph that basically is, you know, the green is where there's something automated and the, the pink is where there's something not. Um, so on this graph across the top are the 10 forms and, and down uh, vertically are the states. And I, and I did a, put a little red line around Illinois just, to, just as a reference point. And what we found was that about, old, you know, we've only gotten 20% of the job done. Um, so those five million, you know, is 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 a good start. It's 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 a uh, it's you know the work is not done, and th and this isn't the hard work. This isn't, you know, blockchain, artificial intelligence, you know, uh, machine learning. This is simple form automation, straightforward, you know, something that's probably been done in four or five states, but hasn't been done in the other 45 states. Or maybe it's been done in 10 or 20 states, but hasn't been done in the other 30 or 40. So, so it's like just sitting there at a table. It's, it's, it's benefit for self-represented litigants sitting on a table. So, so we, 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 uh, we arranged with uh, the ATJ uh, fellowship program. We got Alexandra Jones, uh, who is awesome and a 3L at Duquesne, and, and you should watch her video. She'll, she'll go into this in, in more detail than I am. But basically we said, do the same thing, but expand it. Um, and so uh, she created this giant spreadsheet and you can download it from, from the website. And, and uh, I was assuming you were gonna, she was gonna be, you know, she would have covered it in more detail, but I'll, but I'll broadly say that there's, there's a lot of like little pieces of metadata in there that we want, that we know we can go even deeper on. First of all, we have all these sources of where do people link to automated forms. Obviously, it's from legal aid websites and courts uh, websites and and other places. Um, and what I would like to do is, is is track that more precisely and thoroughly on into the future. We also classified automation. Uh, we were most interested in what, what was done in A to J author because we're trying to figure out how to make ourselves better. But we want to know what's what wasn't automated or what was only only a, a non-fillable PDF or a fillable PDF. Um, or uh, apparently a lot of folks also put up just the Word doc um, or what was automated but outside of A to J author. And we could go deeper into that, obviously, break out that automated non A to J into were they automated with hot docs, doc assemble, document, uh, other things. And for the most part, these are all the free ones or the uh, provided by a legal aid or a nonprofit. And so they, so it doesn't cover the, the many um, quasi for-profit or, or, or pro bono, or it, it's, uh, you know, we, I don't even have a good language for this. And that's something that we need to work on. Things like uh, in, in the document format or hello divorce, which is not free, but 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 less expensive than a lawyer. Um, you know, we want to know about those those that meta information about form automation, at least again in this narrow space of of uh, low hanging fruit. And finally, there's the list of things that we that we call low hanging fruit. Um, this isn't. It, it's it, we we had at some point we had to like cut it off and say, well, there's other stuff that could fit in this, but but I, but I wanted to limit you know, Alexandra's work over the summer. She only had a couple of months with us. Um, but we could go deeper and better on, on all of this and even deeper on, on child support because there's there's lots of different things around child support and around custody and visitation. It's not just a, a single form. Um, you know, it, it, all, all of this is trying to figure out what are the atoms, what are the molecules, what are the what are the compounds, you know, what 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 what's the size and shape of the space that we're doing this work in. So the results of, of, of Alexander's work were, you know, again, in the 18 to 20 percent, you know, beyond simple PDF have been automated, uh, pretty much confirmed what we knew before. But now we can go find it back again and we can start to build on it and, and, and learn more. And, and the, the, the obvious um, uh, inspiration after doing this is we should do the other 80 percent. How might we do that? Well, Callie has for years been been doing something with 
Cali lessons, which we call the fellowship model. And if we apply that idea, at least to the low hanging fruit automated form space, you know, we would take, we would find five to 10 lawyers and we would pay them. Years ago, Cali used to get its lessons written by law faculty, but, uh, and they were volunteers because it was new and exciting. Um, but it, it, but we had a large attrition rate of volunteers. In other words, and I'm making the numbers up, but like for every time, if we got a hundred people to volunteer to work on a project, you know, only 20% of the projects would get any progress and only 10% of them would finish. And that's because uh, life is busy. People have to have to go. There's there's nothing but the their 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 desire, which is genuine and authentic, but can be overridden by the realities of life, pandemics, family, jobs, and things like that. Uh, when we changed our model to pay faculty to write lessons, get them under contract, um, you know, uh, it it did it did stifle somewhat the volunteer fervor, but it resulted in 80 to 85% completion rates of our projects because there was money in the line, there was a formal arrangement, there was a formal thing. It, 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 and, you know, there, there's pluses and minuses, but there are more pluses than minuses. And so the goal here is to, is to basically create 50 state you know, if there aren't expungement forms in every state, then there should be. If there aren't uncontested divorce in every state, then there should be, and so on and so forth. But we should assemble lawyers by the subject area because theoretically they have something to share with each other, even if they're working on different states. Uh, it's the same thing we do with Cali lessons. We get five Civ Pro teachers or five Torts teachers. And even though they all write their individual Cali lessons, they look at each other's and they and they say, oh, I've got a great, hypothetical for that or here's a better turn of a phrase or this is a great acronym in other words subject matter expertise is never 100 percent coverage and so if you get four or five people with subject matter expertise together they actually make a better uh product for for all of them um and that's like a built-in uh uh what's the word review function or um quality control that's the word i'm looking for uh, if we do it this way, we might even be able to get publicity, right? If you say, you know, we're gonna we're gonna do the fifty, you know, one hundred percent of all the, um, um, you know, uh, expungement forms, you know, will will be automated. People get more excited about that when you do large numbers of automations than when you do small numbers. With Cali lessons, that means we can publish twenty five or thirty lessons. You know, it's a it's a punk punctuated number of things. Uh, we could, if we if we have the money to pay these people, and that's an issue, uh, we could have multiple parallel vertical projects. So while we're working on one vertical in the law, we could be working on child custody. We could also be working on uncontested divorce. There's some benefit to the subject matter experts knowing about each other's work, in, in, in although it's in a different area of law, but not as much as knowing about each other's work in the same area, right? You can't do this without having staff that you pay. Um, I have full-time staff who wrangle faculty. And Jessica is our A to J author wrangler for our grants. And, um, and, and those are the people that you know, are, have, have deep knowledge of the tool, uh, translate problems and, and ideas back to the developer, you know, who we keep in a dark room and don't let them talk to people. Um, and, 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 and generally sort of ride the project to success. Um, you know, my, my Cali person is uh, Deb Quintel and she's, she's uh, you know, uh, wrangled hundreds of law faculty to complete uh, over a thousand Cali lessons over the last decade or so. So a back of the envelope sort of calculation here. And again, this is my uh, warning that uh, uh, this is, these are aspirational ideas is that you know there's another thousand forms to be automated and you know you're probably going to have to pay people about a couple of thousand dollars to automate them. now some of them are going to be easier and cheaper maybe some of them are going to be harder and more expensive who knows when you get into it you know the devil's in the details but if you took that as sort of a, a median or a mean um, i can't remember which um you know i'm talking about trying to spend about two or three million dollars um and that would result in you know, if this is 20% and that's, and you just saw 
and we we do five or six hundred thousand of these a year uh, in terms of the runs of the of the guided interviews, then that would be two and a half million runs per year that cost us two and a half million dollars to do. So the cost is about a dollar per run per or a dollar per person per year for this project, which is an insanely tiny number. If you think about the benefit of helping somebody with their problem, only costing about a buck. Now, the goal here is just to be able to scale this. You know, we've talked about, you know, having lots of things automated. I, I so want to get past, I view this as, as literally only the, the beginning of, of our of, of what we can do <clears throat> i want to scale past the the low-hanging fruit and get into more complicated and more interesting stuff but i don't feel like i can leave the low-hanging fruit behind it's too useful it's proven to me that it's too valuable and i want a project that's sustainable you know that that will help us to you know finish it in, in a couple of years it might take and to keep it up to date and that's 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 a naughty problem i don't have a great solution for with cali we have our law schools and our membership and we we go back to our authors and we pay them to review and update their lessons as the law changes so likely or maybe there's a model there to do something like that anyhow here's where here's my hypothesis as i laid out you know a thousand is forms or the other 80 percent two and a half thousand 2500 each you know is two and a half million dollars you know and that's based on our experience with how much time it might take and 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 this is by no means a precise thing you know and it would result in two and a half million usages per year which comes out to that one dollar thing so that would be kind of cool so where might this money come from well the money is already coming from tigs uh legal aid programs get money from lsc and their tig and, and they automate some forms um, unfortunately, uh, you know, th those tend to be one-offs, right? They, they do those projects and then they, and, and then they, and then years later, they're, they're moribund or they haven't been updated or looked at or something like that. Now that's not to say that legal aid is, uh, uh, doing a bad job there because the courts aren't much better in keeping their forms up to date sometimes. Um, the whole space sort of needs a, needs a kick in the pants on quality assurance, but um, and, and I don't know how much of that technology can solve, but, uh, but, but because it's a problem of the space, you know, we have to think about it at least and, and try to find ways to deal with it. <clears throat> because Cali is a consortium of law schools, and because learning how to do this, automate forms, is a valuable skill, because I believe it's the future of a lot of law practice, um, you know, there's, there's, there's possibility of getting the students involved. Now, students are some of the worst people to automate forms because they're not subject matter experts, um, but they're helpful in other ways. They know about the law, so maybe maybe they could be great apprentices. And anything and, and cheap apprenticeships uh, could could lower the the overall cost um, and provide training opportunities or learning opportunities for the students. So it becomes a win win. Now, the courts, and especially in this time of pandemic, are getting much more interested in this. How can we keep people away from the courthouse and coughing and sneezing on us and instead handling their problems remotely? <clears throat> well, automate some of your forms, you know, and tie them into an e-filing system. And let people do everything without having to come in, you know, either, either by Zoom or by electronic mail, you know, don't require a wet signature or, a, or an in-person notary. I mean, all of those things are now on the table during this pandemic is portal time. There are foundations willing to do grants, especially in vertical interest areas, domestic violence, things like that. Um, and there are vertical interests. And this is that, that gray area of they, they want to do access, people doing access, <clears throat> people doing access to justice, pardon me, Pardon me. People doing access to justice, but but also trying to be sustainable by charging people who can pay, or by finding some sort of revenue model that allows the the the, the staff to be paid and the programs to be paid, but also service to be made available to those who can't afford. Um, and all of these things, I drew this as an, uh, a series of overlapping circles because there's synergies possible at the intersections of some or all of these. 
And those are the things that, that I'm going to be exploring, that Callie is going to be exploring for how we might pull this off. I can imagine this spreadsheet turning into essentially a, a web page where we can get people to suggest, oh, you missed this one. Why don't you add this? Or there's incorrect information, you know, as well as uh, uh, so, so a place for data to be kept up to date, as well as a place for data to be extracted, like show me all the all the automated forms in Oklahoma, show me all the all automated forms. Not as a replacement for the court websites or the legal aid websites or all the other websites, but it's but it's sort of a but but it's something that that we need to to track the bigger ecology of what we're doing. And so anyhow, that's that's our goal and that's our plan. And um, uh, that's all I've got to say. If there's uh, questions or ideas, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, Jessica, I turn it back over to you. All right. Thank you all. Bye bye. Bye.